Uh, before I get started, I want to thank the Greens. That was, that was wonderful. Thank you all for coming to, today. I want to thank each and every single one of you all showing up for our 26th homecoming here at Timberlake Baptist Church. It's a blessing. Uh, thank you, Preacher, for the opportunity. And I also want to thank uh, my Lord and Savior for the opportunity to be able to stand before you uh, this morning. Because if it weren't for Him, I wouldn't be here today. Amen. Uh, well, when I had the opportunity to preach for you this uh, homecoming, I uh, started praying, and the Lord laid this on my heart. So if you want to go ahead and take your uh, Bibles to Joshua chapter 24, verses 14, starting there. I want to preach for a message on, let's go home. Uh, you know, hold on real quick, let me, let me go ahead. Don't go home just yet. But um, I want to talk about four homes this morning, and before I go any further, I want to go to the Lord in a word of prayer. So let's pray. Dear my Father, Lord, thank you, Jesus, for this wonderful day you gave us, Lord. Thank you for our many blessings. Lord, I just want to thank you so much for the opportunity to come to your house this morning, Lord, just to hear from you and just to see what you've done, Lord. And I just thank you so much uh, for this church and everybody here today, Lord. I just pray you bless them, Lord. Lord, I just pray right now, Lord, that you just remove me and just take, take over and have full reign in this service, Lord. And I just give you all the praise going on forever. For in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right. I want to talk about four homes for you this morning. And the first home I want to talk to you about is where you lay your head. Well, for me, this is 316 Hillcrest Avenue. My home, my resting place. And I think that's what a few of us are going to do after we get our bellies full in a few minutes. We're going to go lay our heads down. I have three questions I want, I want you to ask yourself this morning. First one is, what is controlling your home? Is it television, games, your job, or even technology? Uh, believe it or not, everyday, everyday items have become first in our, in our lives nowadays. Uh, we seem just to go with emotions day in and day out. And uh, we have grown accustomed to these routines that we just don't even think about it. We just go with the flow. But I think it's time we as Christians take a step back and realize that certain things seem to come first in our lives. But it's time to put God first back in our homes. Amen? And in our lives also. So beginning reading in Joshua chapter 24, verses 14 and 15. Now, th- now therefore, fear the Lord and serve Him in sincerity and in truth, and put away your, the gods which your fathers served on the other side of the flood in Egypt, and serve ye the Lord. And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom you will serve, whether the gods <clears throat> which your fathers served that were on the other side of the flood, or the gods of the Amorites in whose lands you dwell. But as for me and my house... We will serve the Lord. Don't let anything come between you and God. Don't let anything, these things, or whatever is in, 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 comes first in your life or in your home come be, between you and God because, truth be told, they start becoming gods in our life. And if anything receives more time than, than God in heaven, then I believe it's becoming a problem. And I'm not saying that we should give up these things. Uh, but they need to come second to God. Because I'm, I'm guilty of it myself, folks. I'm, when, I'm, when I should probably be studying the Word of God, I'm probably on my phone playing some game that don't get me nowhere in life. And, um, but as of today, I'm going to try my best to stay more in the faith book than in the Facebook. Amen? All right. Uh, my second question I want you to ask yourself is, who is watching your way of living? Believe it or not, folks, we have people watching us each and every single day. And... Uh, the people who watch us the most are our children, our little brothers and sisters, which I have. They are watching me each and every single day. And we all have somebody that looks up to us. And uh, each and every single day when I wake up, I thank the Lord for waking me up because there means there's work to do. And I believe that I try to live my best and teach others what Jesus would have them to do. Proverbs 22, 6 says, Train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. Uh, this is what we should all be doing. Not by telling them how they should live for Jesus, but also showing them. Trust me, um, we should, we should be, uh, want to train them up because I have some good trainers here that have helped me grow in my walk in faith with Jesus, and I thank them. Um, if I was going to go to the Olympics, I wouldn't pick somebody, say basketball for instance, I wouldn't pick somebody to be my trainer who couldn't really play at all, right? I want somebody who's living and walking and breathing the Word of God to train me. And I'm thankful that I have people here at Timberlake Baptist Church that were able to help me in my walk of faith with the Lord. Uh, <clears throat> well, you know that saying, monkey see, monkey do, right? 
Aaron Tickle, he's just like Mike. <laughs> Woo! Oh, me. I tell you, I'm so proud of Aaron. On oh, Wednesday nights, he's always eager to pass, give you a prayer list. He's, he's like Mike, passing out stuff, trying to get the Word in your hand, trying to get you people to pray for. We need more children like that. We need children like CJ. He's, he's just like Julius too, I tell you. I, trust me, I know because I'm the Sunday night teacher here at Timberlake, and I, trust me, they act just like you. <laughs> but uh, I'm so thankful they have that opportunity. And um, uh, CJ, he's always eager to help somebody. He, he's got a servant's heart, and I'm so thankful for that. And, um, well, I told you the, the, uh, the saying, monkey see, monkey do. Well, it's the true one because y'all pray for my brother, heaven. Oh, me. <laughs> I see me and that boy all the time. Y'all pray for him. I tell you, he, 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 I mean, others see it in him too. And trust me, it is scary, folks. It is. Y'all pray for him. Uh, yeah, he sees me fall short of the man of God that I'm called to be sometimes. But what he does see also is me get right back up when every time I fall. And that's what I'm going to try to do each and every single day in my life. And that's what we should all do. Every time we fall, don't stay down. Get right back up, folks. Show them how to do it. Live the life that they should be living. And which brings me to my last question. What are you going to do about it? Matthew 6.33 But seek ye the first... But seek ye the first... No, no, no. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. We need to keep God first in our lives so that our children and our people who look up to us will uh, follow in what we believe. And we need to live like we believe, folks. We should live our lives for the glory of God. Like I said, each and every single morning, I thank the Lord for waking me up, and I say, Lord, please help me to fulfill Your will for my life. Uh, and the main thing that we need to do when we go home, we need to make sure that we do what the last part of this verse says in Joshua twenty four fifteen b. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. So let's go home and let's make sure we make sure that God is first in our home. The second point that I have for you this morning is. The second home, which is where we come to worship, where we are right now. Um, I have three points for you under this one, and it's, the first point is, when should we go to church? Well, let's read it in God's Word in Hebrews chapter 10, verses 25. Not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together, as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as ye see the day approaching. Every time the doors are open, that's when we should come to the house of the Lord. Amen? Amen. Uh, <clears throat> I've heard people tell me all the time, well, I get my church on TV. Well, that's, that's not what God's Word says. It says, not forsaking the assembly of ourselves. <clears throat> if you are able and you are not sick, I believe you should be at the church every time the doors are open. And that, that's what I feel like the Lord would want you to do. And... Um, this church here, this is my second home. I have church family here, and I'm so thankful for my church family. And uh, this really is my second home because I have my grandma. She always asks me, she says, what you got going on at church tonight? What you got going on at church tonight? You don't ever stay home. Well, I'm always trying to go do something and try to come here and help out the best that I can. And I'm so thankful. That's, that's, that's a blessing right there to be able to say, what you doing at church tonight? Don't, don't ask me what I'm doing, but ask me what am I doing at church. I think that is real good. The second point that I have is, why should we go to church? Because you love Jesus. That's why we should go. That's what He wants us to do. John fourteen fifteen says, If you love me, keep my commandments. Uh, there's more than just the Ten Commandments. We have, when, we, when we accept Jesus into our lives, there's more commandments. Tithing. Uh, coming to church, going out and witnessing. These are other commandments that God wants us to do. And people try to say all the time, well, I don't have to go to church to be saved. Well, th that's true. You don't have to go to church to be saved. But if you're saved, you should want to come to church. You should want to be in the house of the Lord. Amen? My last point under this one is, what should happen when you go to church? First one under that is, be blessed. Psalms chapter 1, verses 1 through 3 Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. 
Amen. Has it been a blessing this morning? It's been a blessing to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. And I tell you, uh, it's, it's been a blessing to be here. Uh, it's a blessing to see everything that the Lord has already done. And I'm looking forward to what He's still going to do. Uh, but sometimes His blessings come in, uh, come in disguises, which brings me to my second point. You should be blessed when you come to the Lord, but you should also be blistered. Proverbs chapter 3, verses 12 says, For whom the Lord loveth, He correcteth, even as a father the, the son in whom He delighteth. I always try to pick on my brothers and sisters, saying that I had I had I had it worse than all I had it worse than y'all. I got more whoopings than anybody. Well, this is true because I probably wore out my mom and dad because how bad I was. But anyway, um, I didn't know it then, but I know it now that they love me. That's why they did that, and that's what God's going to do. He wouldn't blister you if He didn't love you, and that's what Christians need to wake up and realize. And um, uh, as, uh, we need to know right from wrong. And as Brother uh, Mike preached uh, Wednesday, he stepped on my toes. And I'm thankful that the man of God, that God used the man of God to step on my toes and to get me uh, walking back in the way of the righteous, you know? And uh, there are going to be times we get our toes stepped on. And when I, get my steps, my, when I get my toes stepped on, I don't get mad at the preacher and go off, run off somewhere else down the road. No, I realize that there are that, the, that God is showing that I need to change my life. The problem isn't with the man of God. The problem isn't with God. The problem is with me. And we need to realize that. We need to realize that we need to have a closer walk with Jesus, and the man of God is used to do that. And we will have our toes stepped on, and if this, if this, if this doesn't happen from time to time, you're either lying to yourself or the man of God isn't doing his job. My last point under this one is we need to be burdened. We need to be burdened for lost souls. In Luke chapter 15, verses 4, What man of you having a hundred sheep, if he lose one of them, does he not leave the ninety and nine in the wilderness and go after that which is lost until he find it? That's what we need, people. We need that burden for lost souls. We need to go out and realize that there are people who do not know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. And we need to go out and fulfill the will of the Father uh, for our church and to win the lost and encourage the brethren. That's what the church needs to do. We need to rise up and do that. So I talked about where we lay our heads and where we worship at. And my third point is I want to talk about where we plan to worship. Here at Terra Lake, we have been blessed. And we have some property out in Blair's. And that we hope to be on soon, amen? Amen. And I believe we can be out there soon. But in order to do that, we need some servants to rise to the occasion. We have three kind of servants that we need to rise up. And they're sitting here this morning. But the, the question you need to ask yourself is, are you going to rise up or are you just going to sit there? The first one is, we need faithful servants. Can all the charter members please stand up, please? If you were here when the church fan was founded, could you please stand up? Let's give them a hand, folks. <laughs> These are faithful servants. Because of their faith, they're stepping out on faith, we are here today. Without them... We, we, this wouldn't this wouldn't be happening. We couldn't. We, we no hope in Blair's. So I thank you so much for paving the way for me and the rest of us. I really do, from the bottom of my heart. I thank you so much because of their faith. Look at all this happened. Look what's going to happen. But we need some more faithful servants. We need for people to do what Second Chron, uh, Corinthians five seven says. For we walk by faith and not by sight. We need people like Joseph. You know, he was beaten. He was betrayed. He was he was thrown in prison, but he kept his faith. He kept his faith, and God delivered him. So no matter what happens, we need to keep the faith and stay true to God's Word. The second kind of servant that we need is we need fruitful servants. Mark chapter 16, verses 15 says, And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. That's me and you. Anybody here can go preach the gospel. Anybody here can lead anybody to the Lord. you just got to be willing to be used by God. Anybody here can be a fruitful servant. We need people going out there and sharing the gospel. We need people planting seeds, watering them, and seeing them go, grow. We need people who love to see people getting saved. Because all heaven rejoices if one soul saved, right? So why can't we rejoice down here? Amen? Amen. We need people like the disciples going out and telling the good news. The first church. We need to get back to the first church when we weren't caught up in too much religion and we were just so excited about that relationship. We need that childlike faith again to go out 
and just tell the good news about how good Jesus has been to you. Because He's been good to you, amen? Amen. We want to tell everybody that. And um, I want to read what happened when they went out and spread that good news. Uh, Acts chapter 2, verses 41, Then they that gladly received His word were baptized. And the same day they were added unto them 3,000 souls. Amen. Woo! That's what I want. I want 3,000. How about you? I want to see 3,000 people, uh, 3, people to come to know Jesus as Lord and Savior. And I believe that can happen today, folks. The same power that saved 3,000 people uh, 2,000 years ago has the same power today. Uh, in the city we live in, there are lost people everywhere you go. And you ask me, how, well, I'm a mailman. I see them every day. Trust me, they're out there. I tell you, uh, we, we need to go out into the highways and hedges and share the Word of God with each and every single person we come in contact with. We need faithful servants and we need fruitful servants, but we also need fearless servants. We need people who are not afraid of the mountains we must climb and the valleys we must walk through. We need people like David who aren't afraid of the giants in our way. Uh, there's a song out on the radio now that I like to listen to. Uh, the stone inside your hand may be small, but watch the giant fall. That's, that stone may be small and that giant may be tall, but I serve a God who's bigger and badder than any old stinking giant that we come across in our way. Amen? Isaiah 12 uh, verses 2 says, Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and be, uh, not be afraid. For the Lord Jehovah is my strength and my song. He, is also, he also is become my salvation. God will get us through anything we face. And sometimes we just need to be still and know that He is God. Uh, sometimes that's the hardest one of the things to do is to be still. Uh, but I want to let you know, church, God didn't bring us this far just to leave us. He ain't done here at Timberlake Lake Baptist Church. He's still got great things to do. We've got a vacation Bible school coming this week. I'm looking forward to souls being saved and lives being changed. Amen? Amen. Uh, church, God needs us to rise up to be those servants so that we continue to, do, to continue to do great and mighty things for the Lord. So we just need to rise up. Don't worry about what other people are doing. We need to just take that stand. And we need to know that we will serve the God that we serve. <clears throat> and uh, my last point that I want to talk about is where will you go for all of eternity? Well, there's only one or two places that you would go. And I want, to t- I want to tell you about those. When you take your last breath on this earth, it's one or two places you would go. First one is heaven and the second one is hell. Uh, and there's only one way to heaven, folks, uh, and that's through Jesus Christ. John chapter 14, verse 6 says, Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. You can't work your way to heaven. You cannot be good enough to get to heaven. And you cannot pay your way into heaven. The only way to heaven is through the precious blood of Jesus Christ. And um, I want everybody to go to heaven. Amen? I'm so thankful I ain't going alone. Amen? Amen. Who's ready to go right now? Amen. What a day that would be, right? Even so, come quickly, Lord Jesus. But not all will go to heaven. And that's sad. That's why we need that burden for souls. We need to go out there and share the good news. Share them how to get there. Show them the key, which is Jesus. He's the door also. Romans 6.23 says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. The death that this verse right here is talking about is talking about eternal separation from God. If you, leave this, if you leave this earth without Jesus Christ in your heart, no ifs, ands, or buts, your destination is hell. And I don't want that for nobody. And neither does God. <laughs> that's why in John 3.16, For God so loved the world, that's me and you, He loved us so much that He sent His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Folks, if you're here today and you do not know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, please do not leave. Please don't leave here tonight, this morning, without asking Him into your heart. Maybe you don't have a home in heaven today, but if you ask Jesus to come into your heart, I promise you, without a shadow of a doubt, He'll reach down from heaven and He'll save you. Every head bowed, every eyes closed. That's